everybody can share in these world's gifts. If they've been invented, why should only a few share in them? Why can't more people share in the uh, marvelous creativity that has come to our planet? Our people live very simply and happily without having so many things. So we have to learn to have the necessary things of life and not ask ourselves, what do we want, but what do I need? We have some good news for you today in the person of Dorothy Stang, a missionary to know and remember. Stay tuned. <laughs> Hello and welcome to our program, Good News in Our Neighborhood. I'm Sister Jean Schmid, a school sister of Notre Dame, and I am a missionary. I belong to a group of women dedicated to making good news happen wherever we are located. Since we are an international congregation, our neighborhood is much bigger than you might think. Today's program is on the missionary heart. We commemorate Sister Dorothy Stang in today's program. You see, Dorothy died in 2005 at the hands of assassins, and the circumstances surrounding her premature death still exist. is this person who was honored by the Congress of the United States of America? She must have done something wonderful, something that greatly improved the lives of people, something that could give us all hope. Sister Dorothy was an American Catholic nun with the Order of Sisters of Notre Dame, Dina Moore. She worked in earnest to profess the Order's mission to educate and stand with the poor. Sister Dorothy also worked with the Pastoral Land Commission, an organization of the Catholic Church that fights for the rights of rural workers and peasants. Sister Dorothy's selfless way of life brought comfort and hope to an area of the world wrought with corruption and despair. She was committed to social justice and worked tirelessly to help poor farmers with sustainable development techniques minister and teach the men of the village to be faith leaders and help in the building of houses and schoolrooms. Sister Dorothy taught the women of Brazil to sew and to sell clothing, to finance the building of a dam, to provide electricity to their community. She pioneered 21 community centers. These centers taught agriculture, health care, education, and spirituality. Although she was a profound leader and loved by many, her fate did not parallel her life's work. Sister Dorothy was brutally murdered on February 12th of this year after receiving several death threats from loggers and landowners. Dorothy Stang was born in Dayton, Ohio. She was one of nine children and went to nearby Catholic schools in Dayton. In this family, each child had special duties to help keep harmony and a certain degree of order to keep people happy. Dorothy's sister, Barbara, shares some memories of her older sister, Dorothy. I was her job. She had to make sure my face was clean and my hair was brushed and my clothes were tidy and off to school we went to get there on time with a clean face, no tears, my books, my clothes. <laughs> Even at an early age, Dorothy was a very kind and caring person, very enthusiastic and involved in many activities. We will introduce you now to her good friend, Sister Joan Krim, who will share more about this. I think it's important that people know that Dot was a very active, happy young girl and that she was very dedicated to whatever she did. Any sport there was at school, she played it. 
She worked, uh, she made bed pads for the Dominican Sisters of the Sick Poor, and that was an every Friday night thing. There was like um, a small Bible study group that she was in, and uh, they prayed for the needs of the school and the kids and, and things like that. She was the head of uh, Club Coyote, which is a Catholic young people's group in Dayton at the time, and they had dances and hay rides and things like that. And so she was on that board or the president of that. And she worked at Good Sam in the pharmacy after school from four to eight. So I don't know how she did all that. Dorothy entered the Sisters of Notre Dame de Namur right after high school in 1947. Their mother house is located in Cincinnati, Ohio. Her friend from school tells us that Dorothy had pondered entering the convent for quite some time. I think she chose to enter the Sisters of Notre Dame because she saw it as a missionary congregation as well as a teaching congregation. She wanted to be a missionary. She wanted to be a missionary in China, and she put that at the top of her application. Dorothy could not go to China as a missionary. Instead, she was sent to Phoenix, Arizona, where she spent her weekdays teaching in the classroom and her weekends working with migrant farmers and their families. There, she was deeply touched by the injustices and the poverty which she saw. What prompted women religious to leave the comforts of developed nations to go to foreign lands to work with the poor? In 1962, Pope John XXIII asked that religious communities from around the world serve the poor in Latin America. In response to that request, the Sisters of Notre Dame de Namur sent Sister Dorothy and four other sisters to live and work in Brazil. Dorothy's dedication to the poor grew during this time of her life, so she was delighted when she was sent to Brazil to work with poor farmers and their families. Brazil is made up of a diverse population of indigenous people, Indians, persons of African descent, and descendants of the early Portuguese settlers. Dorothy and three other sisters were sent to the village of Coroda in northeast Brazil. In the beginning, the work of the sisters was to teach the faith and to prepare people for the sacraments. We were going into what we call the interior. The villages in the forest. We would go to the home of the land owner and all the people would come in and we would have mass. We would baptize anybody who had been born that year. We would marry anyone who started to live together that year. And I know the first time that we went in, Dorothy and I came home and we, we cried over the situation. There were a few men who owned land and all of the people worked for them. They, they farmed and they had to buy their seed from the landowner which he sold at a high price. They planted their crops. They had to buy from the landowner's store the coffee and, and the milk and the, the things they bought from the landowner's store was at a high price so that they always owed the landowner. When the crops were ready, they had to sell them to the landowner at a low price. Sister Dorothy worked for more than 40 years in the Amazon region of Brazil, serving the needs of people who were devastatingly poor. She fought to preserve the Amazon forest from mass destruction. Sister Dorothy's dream was to have an area of land set aside by the federal government of Brazil as a federal reserve where the poor families and landless peasants would be safe, where they could farm their land build their own income-producing businesses, and above all, where they could live in peace 
and dignity without threats to their lives. In 1972, a radical change took place. The Brazil government offered the landless farmers plots of land in the Amazon forest. Many responded to this offer. It gave them hope of a future for their families. Dorothy and another sister went with the families into the Amazon forest in the state of Para. In 1972, the national government started the land reform movement. And at that point, they had built the Trans-Amazon Highway, which is still today a dirt road, except for 100 kilometers. They wanted to populate that area, and they offered land to anyone who wanted to go up there, and they would have their own plot of land. They could plant their own crops. This was like a dream for the people in Coroata and, and other places. It was an exciting time. People had never owned their own land. They did not know how to farm in the forest. However, with Dorothy's help, they learned sustainable farming and began to build their simple huts and to grow crops. They gathered in faith communities and learned of their dignity as human beings made in the image and likeness of God. In 1982, the people began to see that they were being invaded constantly by ranchers who were coming into the area also to take advantage of the Trans-Amazon Highway. And they would invade the people's property and chase them off the land. The people were trying to get help from the government and they wouldn't pay any attention to them. So in 1982, they formed a union and they called it the Farmers Union of Trans-Amazonica East. The first thing they did was have a strike because they had been asking the government to fix the roads and the government wouldn't do it. So they stayed on the road so no trucks or anything could get through. And after a couple of days, the government gave, it, gave in and they came and they fixed the bridge and they fixed the road. And that was their first great success and it made them feel really good. But soon Dorothy and her people had to face a new evil, the greed of large soy and cattle farmers and illegal loggers who were eager to profit from the global market. The forest was being destroyed. Already 20% was due to the cutting and burning of the trees and plants. The land of the small farmers and their homes were being violently taken by large corporate farmers and ranchers. Houses and crops were burned and the people driven deeper into the forest where they were homeless until they could build once again. Dot moved six times with them. And finally, she moved to Anapu. And she began to work with them again to form basic Christian communities. Then the whole destructive cycle would begin again when those with money and power came deeper into the forest looking for more land. Government officials were bribed so that those who stood in the way of the land sharks were murdered. Between 1985 and 2005, more than 500 people were murdered over land disputes, and fewer than 10 murderers were jailed. It was a situation of lawlessness and violence. Sister Dorothy had been struggling against the, the illegal loggers and ranchers who were taking over the land that had been given to the people by the government. And she became an enemy of the wealthy because she was trying to get the deeds, the written deeds for the, these little pieces of land that the people had. Dot always believed that if she could just tell her story, that she could change anyone. And so she would hug 
uh, this very uh, resistant uh, group of political people and rich people. Uh, she would hug them and try to transform and change their minds and get them to think about opening up the market to the poor. This was Dorothy's challenge, to stand with her people and to protect further destruction of the forest. She worked for the cause of the powerless and so made enemies of the powerful. There was a price on her head. $17,500 was offered to anyone who would kill her. A young student from England wanted to meet Sister Dorothy Stang. Fortunately for us, he brought a small camera crew and captured her in action in the Amazon forest in Brazil. The footage you will now see is from that meeting with Sister Dorothy Stang. I'm Sam. I like to travel and explore, but I've always been inspired by those who set out to make a difference in the world. I'd heard about Sister Dorothy Stang, a nun who lives in the heart of the Amazon rainforest and promotes a sustainable way of living for its people. Dedicating her life to a cause, she is fighting ignorance, people that are exploiting the Earth's resources and neglecting the effects on generations to come. She is protecting nature's own right to exist. But what drives a nun in her 70s to try and make such a difference? I had to find out. So I prepared for my mission into the unknown. I think Dorothy's finally here. Fine. Oh, God. Come on, fly. Are you Sam? I am. Oh. Big Brazilian hook, yeah? I brought you a rose. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> oh, it's amazing to see you. I didn't, you know, I was wondering whether you existed or not. Finally, we had met a sweet 75 year old. Immediately, she told me of her struggle and why she was on a death list. Then we were off. A windy bus journey from Altamira to a safe house in Anapu with the cameras hidden. This is a new journey, a discovery, and the dangers are real. Dorothy had got us up early that morning to avoid the logging traffic. She had to take us down part of the Trans Amazonica, the Trans Amazon Highway. It's not really a highway more mud and dust, but it stretches over 2,000 kilometers across the Amazon basin. Can, are they watching for us? Uh, no. She told me about the massive problem of illegal logging. I could see huge logs out the window, just lying by the roadside, and knew this was what her fight was about. But why? And for who? This man taxes people across the river day in, day out. The Amazon is full of little tributaries, and this one was in our way. All right. This thing's got holes in it. Run our way. Yeah, he's swim. He's <laughs> really to make a Then the piranhas are here. The big piranhas. No piranhas. Crazy. We keep having to put the camera down just uh, so no one sees it. We're in the dangerous territories here when it's a bit of a lawless land and um, they're not going to be happy with us filming here. They've got this government inspection. Put it down. And uh, hundreds of cars are heading this way. It was meant to be a total surprise. They're trying to find you know, what logging is going on. But um, they were tipped off. There's so much corruption here. And um, they've hidden. They've hidden everything. What they really did was they burned off new soil, 
and planted these coffee, coffee. trees here. And you can see that coffee there's no, no canopy of the forest left. And so that's what we want to look at right now. In the face of constant threats from armed men trying to evict them, she knows they need strength and have to work together. As they said the Lord's Prayer, I realised not only the importance of community spirit, but of their faith as a firm foundation to the uncertainties ahead. Many of the people cut down the trees because the only thing they know is survival farming at slash and burn. What they do is very limited in relation to these big farmers, we call them ranchers, who see it as a way to have cheap cattle grass. They can cut down thousands of hectares of this and burn it off and plant cattle grass and they can raise thousands of head of cattle. And it takes now one and a half hectare to sustain one cow. So you can imagine how much land has to be devoured if a man wants 3,000 cows. Brazil has about 30% of the world's biodiversity. And so can you imagine when somebody chops down a tremendous area that burns for 10 days and we've lost forever all that biodiversity that took thousands of years for all of this, this plant life to, to originate and to develop. And we've lost in one fire. It's gone forever. And so how can we help bring an awareness of what's happening? What a powerful witness. In closing, we would like to offer a message in the spirit of Sister Dorothy on the importance of the rainforest and also why it is important. Sister Paulette Zimmerman has a thought-provoking reflection on this. Hello, my name is Sister Paulette Zimmerman, a school sister of Notre Dame. I'm the coordinator for Justice, Peace, and the Integrity of Creation for the St. Louis province. And I'd like to talk to you today about the rainforest. Earth is not a planet with life on it. It is a living planet. It is alive. The rainforest is the lungs of this living organism. It is Earth's respiratory system, playing a crucial role in filtering our air. In fact, the Amazon rainforest produces more than 20% of Earth's oxygen, more than any other place on the planet. Thus, the name, the lungs of the planet. The Amazon rainforest is valuable for many reasons. Scientists agree that rainforests are the best natural defense against climate change because they store vast amounts of carbon dioxide. The Amazon now stores at least 80 billion tons of carbon. Rainforests also help regulate global weather patterns, producing rain that travels far away from the tropics. The Amazon rainforest is also precious for its biodiversity, for all the life forms that call it home. More than half of the world's estimated 10 million species of plants and animals live in the tropical rainforest. Amazon rainforest birds account for at least one third of the world's bird species. 70% of plants with anti-cancer properties are found only in the rainforest. And people live here too. 215 ethnic groups with 170 different languages. Despite the Amazon rainforest being a jewel of planet Earth, 200,000 square miles are vanishing each year almost 20% over the past 40 years. That is 90 acres every day. And why is this precious ecosystem being destroyed? What have we to do with this? 
First, cattle farming. Big cattle ranches are responsible for 80% of the deforestation. The number of cattle in the Amazon grew from 21 million in 1995 to 200 million in 2008. Many of the cattle that graze on these lands are destined to become cheap fast food hamburgers in this country as the U.S. is the largest importer of processed Brazilian beef and also leather. A second cause of deforestation is the commercial logging of tropical hardwoods like teak and mahogany for export and other timber for furniture, plywood, chipboard, and cardboard. Industrial soy and palm and coffee plantations are also among the greatest threats. Most of the soy is fed to chickens used in fast food restaurants, and palm oil is now used in most products in supermarkets. We are one interconnected web of life. How we eat, how we furnish our homes, what we buy, what we wear, all make a difference to the rainforest that Dorothy Stang gave her life to protect. So what can we do? Buy coffee, tea, and chocolate that are fair trade and shade grown, that is, grown under the forest canopy. These fair trade items are also mostly organic. And this is different from coffee that is grown in full sun in open plantations that destroy trees and habitat and use a lot of chemical fertilizers and pesticides. Reduce meat consumption, and when you do eat meat, know where it comes from. Avoid products with palm oil. Know where your wood comes from and ask about the leather in your shoes. Use less paper. Stop unwanted catalogs and other mail. And if you do have this paper, be sure to recycle it. We know that what befalls Earth befalls us, who are children of the planet. So in all you do, act thoughtfully and walk gently and compassionately on Earth for the sake of the entire community of life. Mm -hmm.